I'm ready. We're on Live from the Path. All right. Well, welcome back to uh, Live from the Path. Like I said, it feels like just a moment for you. It has been uh, many a moon for us. And so, uh, welcome back. Okay, here's where we go. We got to check up the show, though. So, stuff right, we got to do. It's the second time you've used the phrase many a moon. I said it 10 times yesterday. I'm actually on the decline. Hmm. Because, many a moon. Because one How many of my, months? One of my kids asked, like, uh, what do they mean by, like, three moons? And so I said, I, like, she was in a book she was reading. I said, well, it's, it's, they mean three days. Like, I saw the moon three times. And she goes, well, why couldn't you just say three suns? I said, I don't know, man. It just seems right. I, I just, people say moons. Hey, man, speaking of moon, Friday night, I think I'm, I'm feeling like some popcorn, right? And I think I'm just going to go to a movie theater and get some popcorn. Yeah. Then I thought, I'm just going to see a movie. And then I'm like, you know, my wife was doing a women's retreat thing. Yeah. So I thought, oh, this is flowers, killers of the flower moon thing. I thought, that that sounds interesting. My wife would not do that. It's a three and a half hour movie. Oh, I did, sweet I didn't, I, didn't look, I just wanted popcorn. It's epic. But it was a good I've, movie. Oh. I've never in my life thought, I just want popcorn. I'm going to go to the theater where I can spend $11. You, you don't know how to live. That is, that is living. Yeah, I mean, I do hate hours? popcorn. So I missed it. Oh, I love popcorn. What would you say? What was three and a half hours? The movie. Which movie did you see? Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. It's oh, a story I'd never Mike, heard about. It's a real it. story based on a real story. Sorry, I wasn't yeah. paying attention. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's incredible. I yeah. thought you wouldn't go see that Duck Commander movie. They have a movie now? Yeah, it's called Blind. In the Blinds. From the Blind. Yeah. The blind. <laughs> Whatever. I went and saw it. It was all right. <laughs> if it's there's popcorn, blind. I'm there. Yeah. Okay. All right, here's, so uh, we're going to talk about the show. we got some Ask the Pastor. Yes. I, I just, I, I mean, I can't, we can't spend too long on it, but, like, I got a Christian book catalog, which comes in, I don't know, once every couple months or something, and these holiday gifts for men oh, no. were, ter- I mean, just yeah. terrible. Are there socks? They're terrible. Yeah, like, Ties. socks. There was, yeah, a tie with the thing. Like, there were multiple statues of some sort of Roman soldier, armor of God-looking thing. Oh, and, oh uh, no. And multiple multiple screwdriver kits. Like, Get your husband a legionnaire or a screwdriver kit. <laughs> right. And, and, like, these were things, like, if, as a dude, if you needed a screwdriver, you would you never yeah, reach exactly. for this pile of Do you crap. want this $3 multi-tool? Like, this that's got, the like, a scripture on it or something. Yeah. And I thought. <laughs> so it was $25. These are like terrible. A, a proverb about being a handy person. Anyway, like, what? what I don't know. If someone were to get you. Let the Lord build the house. As a, a Christian esque gift as a dude for Christmas, like, what would be a good one? I expect a rock that just says, on this rock. I, I want some Christian cologne. Christian cologne? I don't know. But it's like, got, there's got to be something frankincense? Good. I don't know. <laughs> it smells like certain scenes from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, we do need to do that. It's essentially like a scent, like uh, uh, just a flight of scents, and it's all the different things of some of the major stories. Yeah. Jonah's just smells real sea-like uh-huh. and breezy. Yeah, we could do that. Like we could, we could do. Oh, d- absolutely. We could Two do. sprays of Saul in a cave. Va- <laughs> Valley of Bones. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's great. You, you smell that? We can get a whole line bones. going on Alibaba. It, it smells specifically <laughs> like dry bones rising. Like, I don't know how you got that from it. Oh, yeah. We got to contact a perfumer. Hey. Some sea salt, caramel. <laughs> you guys remember the worship song? caramel. The, the, what's the worship song where they go, um, just like the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha? Yeah. There ain't anything that he can't do. What's that? Rattle. Yeah. Okay, it's from the song Rattle. Have you guys heard that? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I come across that in scripture this week. And like... The worship song, it's been a while since I'd read it, and so I'd, I forgot the story. And the worship song makes it sound like someone had gone out and like, hey, let's resurrect a man and throw him on the bones of Elisha. They accidentally threw, they didn't mean to bring the man back to life. They just tried to bury him in the same cave of oh, which really a, Elisha's bones were, and then he he resurrected. No, like, you took, the song didn't imply that. I'm just saying. You know, we've had a run with Dear Life from the Past lately where you just make up your own story. And then you put that as part of the answer. So that's what happened to you last last time. No, it is not. Yeah, no, I listened not. back to it, and I'm like, I was right no. for sure. No. And so this, you're doing the same thing with this Elijah story and the song Rattle. I'm Rattle saying, did not say that they intentionally were trying to and raise we a intentionally man. raised this man by throwing him onto <laughs> the bones of the, Elijah. Yeah, it was just ask the man. Leaky just vessel. ask him. Uh, if there's anything that God can't do, yeah, right, and but he's gonna Im- say, yeah, oh. he rose a guy from the dead, even if I, I had no intention. He didn't to have even it done. ask; they just tried. Where to get rid the of the song body. didn't say he asked. Ah. <laughs> It's, oh, it's just the impression. I haven't read that one for a while. Yeah, I, I got to refresh my memory. Yeah. It's it's like two verses. It's just it's, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking of all the all the. I mean, 
What does everybody start bringing their dead relatives there now? I mean, like, I mean, that what, what happens move. from that? It's like the pet cemetery. What if you threw a live guy in there? <laughs> Would he be like ultra alive? <laughs> Feel real good. He was filled <laughs> with the spirit. And like, so the guy comes back to life. Is he healed of what killed him, or does he just have to die again? <laughs> That like, would crap, be now I have cancer again. Distinction. Oh, like, like, right dude, in front of the boat. Got, <laughs> dude got speared in a battle. Still has the gash in his side. I finally Gets had resurrected, peace. but it's like, fellas, we still got a problem here. I still have this whole. Oh. The blood's a cushion like, again. God's like, I bought you like 10 minutes to do something, you guys. <laughs> you could have made something happen. Oh, no. That's great. Okay. Awful. All right. So, okay. So, uh, any other uh, gifts that you'd like to get? No, I don't want any gift like that. Just know me as a person. No. Wait. You know what? Well, I, what kind? Of, that's a hard gift. Here's here's what you can give me. Know me entirely. <laughs> no, no. I want no, to be known. I did not say know me entirely, you creeper. No, you I did. said know me as a person, which is a perfectly understandable thing to say. You guys are already blowing out of proportion. You know me. If you're getting me a gift, there's a chance that you know that I probably like cooking. Or there's plenty of YouTube shows that I watch that you can grab a hold oh, of. Oh, I thought yeah, you were saying that was the gift. Yeah. No. Bible grilling is no. to know me. The, you terrifying. I'm not being esoteric and saying, hey, know me. It was weird. Okay, that is what it sounded know like. Know me as a human being is my presence. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it sounded like. <laughs> All I want for you to be is close to me <laughs> and yes. for you to know me. Preach it. Oh. <laughs> I want to be known by those who love me. So would, would, would there be some, uh, some, some uh, appropriate like Christian underwear? I mean... There's no. got to be some novelty stuff. They, they, they no. put, you know, they We're trying to get away from novelty, Dan. <laughs> I'm just saying. You're the reason we have these catalogs. catalogs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy any of it. Any of it. Uh, no, but people go, I bet Dan would love this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same reason I can't commit to a tattoo. Right? Yeah, with, right. Uh, with a religious, uh, uh, you know, a biblical tie. Like, Because I could never think, like, does this really mean more to me than other stuff in the Bible? Because. Yeah. I can't think of anything that like really rises to the top like a life verse or something, you know? So I'm like, once I get it, I'm like, man, I wish I would have put that bone thing with Elisha on here. Dang it. <laughs> well, what do you do when you put a Bible verse, you know, tattoo on, and then five years later you find out it means something completely different than what you thought at the yeah, time, you know? Right. That's why oh. when, I was, when I was like 18, 19 years old, when I, I knew nothing about Jesus, like at all, and I was, I mean, rampantly running the opposite direction i was like man i'm gonna get that here am i send me part of isaiah and i'm gonna have like and i i, I would go full into it too i'd be like i'm gonna get like you know how it, people get tattoos of somebody praying and they're like like folded hands in front of some candles yeah. isaiah was was bringing war and so it doesn't even make sense to be in candles it makes sense for him to be holding a sword and then in the smoke of the candles that he just blew out because he's ready to go it says, here am I, send me. Uh -huh. And I was going to get that as a back piece, like a oh. full-size back piece. <laughs> oh, that was going to be my opus of my life at 18. I was like, oh, boy. Put that in your I'm Christmas get catalog. That. <laughs> Either that or I was like, I'm going to get a giant door that's barely open. And on, the, on one side, it's it's lit up. And on the other side, it's my shadow cast. And then I'm going to get Matthew 7-7. Seven, seven. Ask it, it will be given to you. Seek it, you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you mm -hmm. on my back. Uh-huh. And I decided against all those things. Yes, this is wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Temporary tattoos. Temporary Christian <laughs> yeah, tattoos. Yeah. Now that, maybe. That would That's go. true. That would yeah. We should do like <laughs> a, a, a one-year trial of uh, maybe not even a year, maybe six months. I feel like it should be longer than I can wash this off in three like, yeah, yeah, hours. Yeah. A six like, months fade. I want to yeah, take a look at this Ezekiel verse for this year. This is my life yeah. verse for the year. I would do one of those. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so, I'm too. in. Let's develop that. <laughs> That's definitely a – yeah, we can do that. We okay. can sell that. Okay, good. What else? Like golf balls with a cross on it. Oh, I got. Man. I saw a wallet that had some kind of like uh, had uh, an embroidered cross in there. I said no. Here's Ooh, the thing: it's yeah. like whatever you're trying to accomplish. If like the what would Jesus do bracelet didn't do it, or like you changing the background of your phone didn't do it, whatever you're gonna buy from this catalog ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I want. A, I want a stress ball of a loaf of bread, and it says I am the bread of life on it. Mm -hmm. I'd buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, not even kidding. I'd take that. I had a, I had a bread candle, looked like a loaf of bread candle in high in college, and it smelled like bread. I mean, I got yeah. It was anyway. Just, okay, it just smells just like a memory there. <laughs> Speaking of bread candles, like it's really Lebanon. Good. I mean, have you seen these folks that they will like melt butter into like a a uh, what is it like a tea candle looking shape, and then freeze it instantly, and like but they'll put a candle wick in it, and then. They take a loaf of bread after about an hour, put this butter candle in the middle of it, and light it on fire, 
and then all the butter melts into the bread. Oh. No, that's interesting. Doesn't that sound awesome? Yeah. Put a little it garlic does. in there. Yeah. A little aioli. Mm. Huh. Yeah. Aioli. Yeah. You yeah, get, you get a temporary tattoo with the name with no. aioli on it. I was gonna say you don't know what aioli is, do you? It's no. Hebrew for butter. No, it's not. <laughs> you don't even know Hebrew. <laughs> okay, Hebrew. so so basically, uh, yeah, if they see, they all seem super cheesy. Like one of them was like a four ratchet set, uh. like a tiny ratchet with four ratchet. You know, four. Uh, what am I thinking of? Sockets. What are the, sockets. sockets. Four sockets in there. I'm like. No legit dude in the world is going to go, that. oh, thank you. <laughs> you might you, be the man for that tool set. If then. you can get these at, at like, the, the bin section of the Harbor Freight during, like, Thanksgiving sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then slap a Jesus quote on them. They're not a good gift. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's not the good bin to go to. Like, it should not be $5 or okay. less for your Christian husband So this goes father. back to that conversation we're having with Arendelle. The farther you are away from that moment... The more you're apt to buy crappy gifts like this, to like remind you of, or things. decorate your place, yeah, with cheesy. I'm, I'm oh, not gosh. saying that like you can't have you know Christian themed stuff at your house, but I guess what I'm saying is like if, like it feels like you're you're grasping, you're trying to hold on to a thing, you know that like, I I don't know, like in that moment, in that moment when you realize that like like you're broken and he's offering freedom. And all the things that he's ever said about himself is true, and and he believes in all the things that he's said about you. You are not thinking about, man. I wish I could just get this written on a pin that I could see on my <laughs> right. desk. Can I get this on a piece of driftwood that I could put above my bed? Right. You're just uh, immediately you start thinking about all the people you want to tell this to. Right. Yeah. You know, like yeah. in a in a in a person to person conversation. You know. I just want to get a stuffed little lamb that I could sleep with. Yeah. That's been murdered. Oh. I, 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 <laughs> Like the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Is that, that's wrong, Dan. I'm sorry. I was, I was not prepared to hear I, that. Yeah, I, it's I, been I, murdered. Yeah. That took a turn. <laughs> we, like, sorry, we get it, Ben. The lamb the white little fluffy lamb. <laughs> that's not the picture. It's, it's been murdered. <laughs> revelation what are you, a lamb? goth? It's covered in blood. All right. Why does he lead you beside still waters, but like when he talks, it's rushing waters? They're not the same pictures, Mike. Right? They're yeah. in the same Bible, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. They're my in lot in the same Bible, Mike. <laughs> no, you got it. <laughs> I'm starting my own denomination. <laughs> Jesus has two states. <laughs> rushing water, still water. <laughs> Welcome to the house of the rushing water. Lambs over here, wolves over there. We won't have deacons. We'll have beacons. <laughs> they couldn't possibly only be four winds. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's a, a complaint line. Let us like, is there, is there? I, I thought like, okay, a Bible. Someone could purchase you a Bible, yeah. but I wouldn't want someone to buy me a Bible. Yeah, like I, I, I would prefer to yeah. choose one, or frankly, just keep my own. Like I don't yeah. want a new one. And so even that, I suppose, like if you were, although I, like I've purchased Bibles for people who like were new to the faith. Yeah, and like if, but it, they don't it, know, right, right. Yeah, and so it's it's uh, which, but it's way different than hey, I got you a flask that says water. And then has a cross on it <laughs> or something like this weird stuff that we've got. Put in water, wine comes out. <laughs> wine comes out. I, w- I want a packet of wheat and tear seeds mixed together. <laughs> what are you doing? What the Bible said? <laughs> you know, it would be weird to have a flask with a cross on it that says, <laughs> that said, you shall never thirst again. <laughs> and, I, and, and it's like an empty flask. Like you can't fill it. Yeah, it's right. like a, there's a, there's, there's a, a cap at the top. There's a thing at the top where you can't put, actually put water in it. Is it? Do people make like biblical playing cards? <laughs> cards for humanity? Oh, like like who's got the Joker? The king, that's right, right. Satan in the garden. <laughs> the King oh, Jesus. No. <laughs> king David. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or that'd be Jesus. No. No. Royal flush. Moses over Hezekiah. <laughs> Queen of Sheba. <laughs> Oh, we really need to develop this. Okay, that seems important. <laughs> we, they would sell like hotcakes. That was great. Okay, temporary, temporary, uh, longer temporary Christian theme tattoos and a deck of biblical playing biblical cards. Playing cards. <laughs> okay, I would do that because that's that's actually funny to me. Like yeah, I would yeah. enjoy it. Okay, we were looking into doing cards last year, and, and I was looking all over the place. Remember, we were going to do that for Christmas. Oh yeah, and, and like they were expensive. Too? Yes, it, it was a like fortune. Right, yeah. Monopoly cost a. A fortune too. Yeah. Or maybe that was it. We were doing Monopoly. Oh yeah, right. Life of the Pathopoly. That was it. Or something. 
Right. Yeah, because like uh, we got the complaint line, like giving us some options. And yeah, some right. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then I found out you can't do it for real. You get it from Etsy or something, and yeah, someone makes right. it. So it's like a fake. And it's so like well, I can make a take fake one. Make it, yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Can they be really cheesy drawings of Moses, like really old school looking? Yeah. Like like tra- like Charleston Heston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's I'm fine. sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll put the thought on that. Maybe we can pull that together, and we'll put it. We still have to do the secular versus Solomon card game. And oh, uh, true. work yeah. on putting that to we can that work together. On that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, if you have any ideas, uh, what uh, what type of non cheesy uh, Christian themed item would you dudes? Maybe actually, uh, dudes or ladies is fine. Like, would you be okay to receive? Okay. Now, now you guys bought locusts. I mean, we could do chocolate covered locusts. That's or true. Make a holiday, you know, theme mint and yes, chocolate. And- That's true. <laughs> That's true. You can expand upon it. Now, I, I I I was okay with the look, like to try. I guess if someone, if, I don't know, if someone got me, I'd be like, oh well, that's kind of cool. Never yeah. mind, I'd be in for it. Can we do Promised Land baskets with like milk and honey in them? <laughs> yeah, you better drink that fast though. That milk don't last. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you see somebody in these lands, though, you got to kick them out. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. you got to rid everybody. Got to get rid of all of them. <laughs> uh. Oh, oh, never mind. That's that's not funny. All right, uh, move up. You had it. You had to ask the pastor. <laughs> you know, I never say that. That's I, not funny. I was just about to say. <laughs> I just say. I'm terrified. <laughs> don't say it. But I'm terrified of what might have come from. Oh no! I can't say that. That's, that's, that's not funny. That's funny. I got about three filter, dresses filter, in my head. Whatever that was. I've censored myself six times in the last fourteen years. I can't say that. That's, I've said some raunchy stuff on this show. Okay. Um, all right. So, ask the pastor this week. So. Uh, in Matthew 16 is when um, uh, Jesus asks, like, who am I? And, yep. and who people say I am, right? And, and Peter affirms that he, he believes that Jesus is the Son of God, right? The Messiah. And uh, Jesus responds and says, you know, on this rock I will build my church, right? Like, yep. that's, the, that's the, the big thing. What is a church at that point in time? Like, the Greek word is the uh, what ecclesia? ecclesia is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's but that's like the first time that pops up as as a word, and so conceptually, church really isn't a thing at this point in time. Like they've got the temple, and they've got the tabernacle, and they've got all like all that Old Testament stuff that still exists in Jerusalem, but like the word church doesn't really have a meaning up to this point, as far as I understand. And so I got as I was reading it, I got confused to thinking like. Does, is Peter taking that incorrectly? Like, is he understanding that that means that, like, the 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 community of the body of Christ in my kingdom, I will build on this rock that that you just said, right? Or who you are on this truth? This, yeah, on this, on this reality, truth. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, like, mm-hmm. but like, I, it's not in the Old Testament anywhere, as far as I understand. Is there just is it a translation thing that there is a word that would have been similar to this in Hebrew that it's just translated into church? Because it's now Greek that's being translated because it's a New Testament book. Like, what's happening here? Because it confused me. Yeah. Then well, do us our first stuff. Well, I'm going to say, Jesus has been spending all his time talking about the kingdom. Agreed. Yep. You know, preaching a lot kingdom, kingdom, in three kingdom. chapters so, prior. So I think just context is just what that's why he's there about. I mean, I can't tell you, the, I haven't done a, a, you know, no, and that's a fair. word yeah. study on it in, right. in recent years. But uh, that that'd be my first initial uh, thought that it's it's the context of everything he's been teaching and preaching and mm-hmm. and that's a big moment there yeah you right know, there there where uh, there are altar uh, temples to Pan the guy yep. Pan you know and all all these right sexual like the worst of the worst is happening right in yep. front of their eyes right. there and he's like this this the kingdom's gonna come and it's gonna blow this all up right you know and and so. I, I'm thinking that's he's, this this thing that we're building. That's that's what he's talking about. Okay. I think I think in the context they would have understood that. Gotcha. That, that's okay. My yeah. S- simple answer. I don't. I I think it's less of a translation issue. The Old Testament didn't need a word for it. Right. Right. Like it talked. Um. They thought of themselves like contextually they were a nation of people. Yes. Exactly. Right. right. And yeah. so like there was no reason to say a church. Right, because like mm-hmm. really the reference is, is primarily you're talking about the, a community of believers under a common set yes, of beliefs, right. and like the nation of Israel itself would have been that. So right. there was not a reason to talk about that. And even even when they did, like think of the after the exile, you're talking about a remnant. Mm-hmm. Like, but you're still talking about a group of a remnant yeah, of a group of people still known. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah. and so I think it's not in the Old Testament um, simply because there was no reason, there wasn't okay. a context mm-hmm. in which you would need to refer to it that way. Now, what Jesus is in Jesus' scenario, he has to. You're, he's calling out something that is different. It's distinct, right? Right. Yeah. Like the community of people who are otherwise 
uh, founded and bound together by the reality that he just said. Yeah. That's a ch- so th- that's that community, the ecclesia, the, mm-hmm. the community or church, if yeah. you want to talk about it that way. Right. And so, like, ignore church, like building, like yeah, whatever. Right. You're talking a community of, of followers bound by this reality. This reality is the foundation of how that community is defined. Right. And that's what he's referring to as the church. And so, I think that's gotcha. Think that's okay, that makes on. sense. And I mean, it, wor- it works within the context of like the essentially the the kingdom building that Jesus has been doing and and setting apart like what is it the major discourses of Matthew that exists where it's like what what is Jesus talking about like this is societally how you act in the kingdom this is how you act to your family in the kingdom this is how you act to non-believers in the kingdom like there's a lot of for lack of a better term world building if you will of like this is how my kingdom my father's kingdom will run it's exactly how this is going to go so mm-hmm. it does make sense it just like i said i was just s- slowly reading it it was the first time i stopped and thought to myself like yeah Oh, that's the first time I've seen the word church yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. And he's yeah, talking yeah. future it's, there. I will build my... And Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and that's why I was thinking, I was like, I wonder if there's like, I don't know if there's there's side conversations that obviously happen that we don't have recording of. Sure. That like, Jesus may have said this at some point in time, it was just never recorded in a gospel that way, of exactly, you, you as you say, Peter, on this rock I will build my church. And it's like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense where we're at. But did that mean anything to Peter at that time? Like, did it did it did it hit the same way that it hits us? Is it was my question? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do. I think to reiterate, they um, it was important to call out that that is the foundation because that is the fundamental split with the right. Judaism yes. at the time, right. right? And so, like, this is this. We are clear. This is distinct. This is the thing that which will bind and define this new yeah. community going forward. That makes sense. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that was my question there. Okay, good. Hey, if you've got an Ask the Pastor, uh, hit up that uh, Life and Path complaint line, and we'd love to be able to to see if we can't narrow it out for you. All right, um, let's give some advice. Dear Life from the Path, I'm at a book club I started with friends 13 years ago. The 12 of us have grown close and value, appreciate, and respect each other. I recently invited a childhood friend to join. She's an avid reader. Life from the Path, although she's a nice person, she simply does not fit in with the group. She talks too much, tends to brag a lot, and makes insensitive comments. Mm-hmm. An example, two of us are leaving on a cruise soon, and she shared how tacky and claustrophobic she thinks those trips are. The rest of the group was appalled, and I feel awful that I introduced her into my longtime book club. On the other hand, I cannot fathom telling my childhood friend the group would prefer she not attend. I am sure it would be hurtful. A few of us are hoping you will have a solution. Please help. A solution. Well, she's made it clear that, that nobody's welcome. It's their long time, long term. They've been doing this forever. You know, it's a very closed circle. Yeah. And they're trying to, I mean, it was really nice of her to, to, to think she could invite. So I think I think at every small church out there, there's like, hey, we're going to bring someone in. And, and they talk like they want to bring people in. But then when someone comes in, they're all like, people are looking at them like, well, you don't belong here. Why, <laughs> right. why, why, why are right. you here? You know, and, and it's the body language and tone of voice and all this stuff kind of tells them I don't really belong here and they leave and that's kind of what they've done this poor friend of hers I'm also interested to hear what what kind of brags this woman is doing (laughs) like is it book based brags like is it like oh I read 30,000 pages last month what did you do Brumhilda (laughs) I got through the pride (laughs) and the prejudice (laughs) I have a signed copy uh we like uh, the the uh, uh, that offensive the thing they were offended at like cruises are yeah i mean i can see why someone would make the connection but maybe the gal was just like well, i don't like cruises yeah, it's a relationship yeah, problem it They're very just easily could have yeah. been like hey man i love french toast it's my favorite thing on the planet one of you guys goes man french toast is the their worst. Cir- their circle like, is like why threatened. would why would i not want waffles yeah like why would i not want waffles That's right. and i go oh, how dare you you should be able to disagree without being how, offended how yeah. dare you friends speak can about the yeah. claustrophobia of French. If Mildred didn't have said the same thing, it'd be okay. Ah, right, yeah, exactly. you know, I'd be like, oh, yeah, you're right. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. your 13-year, 12-person pe- book yeah. club, which is, I mean, Wonderful. good yeah. on you yeah. for yeah. keeping that together for 12 years. Nothing wrong, yeah. But, like, That's yeah. the same time we've roughly been doing the show. 13, actually. Yeah. And Can how you many imagine books have bringing we someone else in here? We'd be all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, We're going true. on a cruise. Oh, it's, yeah, stupid. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. If either of you said I'm going on a cruise soon, I would sit there and go, I get super claustrophobic on ships. And very, very, <laughs> very seasick too. constantly. I don't I even understand do the claustrophobia. I mean, you're in the wide ocean. Well, well, you're in a cabin, though. Well, get out you of really there. You really can't get Go in the ocean. Stand yeah. on the deck. <laughs> Look around a bit. 
I simultaneously have agoraphobia and claustrophobia. I can't be involved in open spaces or closed spaces. I need this to be a real Goldilocks zone. Okay. Where's the poop dick? All right, so I, I, our, uh, would we recommend that she, like for the benefit of the friend, say, look, it's not working out. It's not uh, you, it's us. Because that's embarrassing. It's not you, it's us. It's yeah. embar- I mean, if you this is your childhood that- friend... Can you have a conversation with her? Here's what I th- I think I think she needs to have a con- conversation with the other twelve mm-hmm. and say, you know what, guys, we're you know let's just lighten up, let, let, let's open up here a little bit, you know, and and this is hard. It's always been our little group, but let's let's do what we can. Yeah, uh, you know, and I feel like everybody has a couple groups of friends that just they yeah. they don't mix. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, like, yeah. they just they don't cross lines. And, like, you found a way to navigate through both areas of friendships. But, like, if you're like, if this I, this guy met this guy, you don't think this is going to be a mega friendship. You go, this is going to be a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. We're just two different right. operations. And so, really, this is your fault. You've invite, You've known your friend. If your friend is blurting out in a group of 12 people that she barely knows, tacky references and, like, insulting people, there's no way you did not know that That's ahead true. of this time. This isn't the first time. Yeah, you should have been like, I don't know. I don't know if these ladies are going to take this in right, you know? You're probably in your 60s, and if this is a childhood friend, this might have been 40-plus years of friendship. Mm, yeah. yeah. You know Ethel. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. to Dan's point, though, I think it's worth at least one shot to try to call this group into some introspection. And say, look, are are we not being our best selves here? Because we're just right. too used to um, to being around each other. There's probably a good book that could t- teach me yes. something on that. Yes, that's yeah. right. How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> true. And influence Mildred. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> win friends and kick Mildred out of the book club. I mean, have, have you ever had like in your children when they have like a sleepover or something, and they bring in friends from two parts of their worlds, and they mm-hmm. come in and it's a disaster? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've had that, and it's just like. Uh, let's not bring those Makes in sense. at the same time. That's right. Don't mix these people. Right. You know? Like, we're well, we having a party, though. It's like, ah, that was not a party. That was a cry fest. You know, it's like, eh. Uh-huh. So that's, and it, it never yeah. changes. They're just 60 years later. <laughs> so the question was, uh, let's see. A uh, few of us are hoping that you will have a solution. Yes, we do. Change your ways. You so- could have a conversation on both sides. To the 12 apostles with you and to your lady friend. What are you going to say to the lady friend? <clears throat> I feel like if you've been friends since childhood, and I, she's come in doing this kind of stuff. Is that the sense? I is this childhood, childhood friend. friend. Okay, okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could, that's the thing. Is like it just depends on your level of friendship, right? Like if if Buva showed up and blew up a room, right. of my people, like I w- there's no way I would hesitate saying, "Hey, man." I would like, fully expect you to. They were super excited about that cruise, and you called it tacky. Like that's kind of rough, you know. Mm-hmm. Like where'd that come from? <laughs> I think. I mean, you could just pick an example and say, "What was that about?" Well, I do think they're tacky. Well, I mean, you barely know these people, and they don't you. Like, they don't know that, like, you actually still love them. You basically just, you know, crapped all yeah. over their vacation. Yeah. That was They yeah. get joy out of something, and you went, I don't. That's stupid. Yeah, I mean, that's a cheese grater, man. <laughs> but if yeah. you but if, if you do not give someone a chance to change, it's not a friendship. It's an audition. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. so, 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 like, everybody who should be able to fail and screw up in any given yeah. situation— at least once, without any particularly firm repercussions, you have to give people a chance to change. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're just, they're there to serve you. Right. And so you should recognize that you're behaving that way. Because uh, honestly, we, ha- we have this conversation in the church all the time. You know, we have, uh, we encourage people to get into small groups, so they have small groups, and then those people have shared experiences. So then you have these little pods of people that sit around. So if someone else comes in, and they're not invited, you know, they, they, they feel excluded from all yep. the little pods. Right. Yep. And we're always telling people, open up your pod, let people in, right, yeah. you, you know, stop being a jerk. Right. Yeah, you just have to keep reminding them. And they're all like, yeah, they'll agree and smile and nod. Yes, we must be welcoming. But then their body language, they circle up and the people on the outside trying to get in, you know. And it's so uncomfortable when we have to bring somebody in. I don't want to bring someone in. We, ha- I can, we can talk about our Taco Tuesday last week. And they, <laughs> they, they, they didn't experience that with us. And they yep. have years of books that they've done together. And they just got to mature and let, right. them, let, let the new friend in. Yep. All right. Secular says, how about being completely honest? Tell your childhood friend that if she wants to remain a member of the book club, she will have to brag and talk less and refrain from making insensitive comments. If she asks what you mean by that, repeat the example you shared with me. Postscript. Don't let her be herself. Yeah. Now, what, now here's the thing. Postscript. If, if she's she's new. She's, she's new to this group. Postscript, like, I say. What do you mean? Oh, there's more? <laughs> oh, wait, what? Oh, sorry. Postscript. <laughs> While I can understand why the two of you who are going on the cruise might have been shocked into silence, it would have been better if those two had spoken up and confronted your friend about why she would volunteer something so negative. 
I didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, couldn't you say, oh, I'm sorry you don't like cruises? We I do. Mean, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Some people that go on cruises, that's like half their identity. <laughs> Like it really is. That's They're a personal like, problem, I guess. Yeah, I agreed. I'm just saying, like, I I've known some people that like it's their whole life that they're yeah. like, oh, I, I'm and good for them. All I yeah. am is in between cruises. Yeah. Like, I, that's fantastic. I'm super yeah. excited for you. I would I, never go on a cruise, but I'm not going to tell you that. I guess if this person is new to the group, like I I would just build in some brag. They're trying. They're trying to make a good impression. They yeah. don't know the level. Like uh, that's what people tend to do. You meet someone. For, like you should always take someone's braggadocio the first gate out and go. Maybe they're just trying. They don't know where the level is yeah. and they want to look good, and so they're overdoing it. If it happens the third time, okay, then I think you re- have a different conversation. But like, you know, just they're they're probably nervous and they they know they're walking into a group well, which they don't know all these people. And um, they're just probably not going to get it right. So, like, I suppose I need to know, is this just, re- like, small interactions? Or, like, has this been going on for six months now and right. you can't figure out what to do with it? Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Post-script. I always like to, in a in a brand new situation, I always like to talk to people as if I've known them forever and then see how it shakes out. And it has gone very poorly <laughs> in some situations. and uh, Or we've made, like, instant friendship. Yeah, right. And so, like, maybe she's just doing that, right? She, I would have said if if Ben's like, hey, I'm going on a cruise, I'm like, what the heck? That's, that's a stupid waste of money, yeah. right? Like, I would definitely have said something like that to yeah. my friend that I've known forever. And so, like, maybe she just kind of misfired, you know? There's also something to be taken in. Like, this is definitely, I don't think, ooh, I don't believe that this is a group of old fellas. I think this seems to be a group of old ladies. Mm. And I can only imagine the, like, cost of entrance. To get into an old ladies group that they have been friends for 12 years or 13 years or whatever. And then the childhood friend of one of the long standing members essentially auditioning to be among the 13, right? Like, that's a huge cost yeah. of entrance. You're absolutely right. There's a lot of friggin' braggadocio into that. Yeah. I'm going to show up and tell you exactly how great I am mm-hmm. and why I should be here. And right? why I'm, freaking... I'm, I'm such good friends with Margo. Right, exactly, Margo. yes. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in an executive level interview right now. Like, I'm not interviewing at a call center job. Like, I'm showing up with everything I friggin' got. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. She's probably a little nervous and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, Larry, well, last one. You. Okay. Dear Life from the Path, where is the line and how can I find it? Between not judging someone and holding them accountable for their behavior. I know every situation is different, but is there some general guidance you can offer? That is the most sincere question I've ever yeah. heard from Dear Life from the Path. Yeah. M- maybe if, if, you're, if your goal is to help them improve their, their life and grow, as opposed to just knock them down, I think that seems to be a difference. Yeah, that love. comes to mind. Yeah. I, I would uh, say a, a lot of it has to do with your... Um, with your attitude. And so like, and yeah, like holding someone accountable. Here's the thing. You're not a, I don't care who you are. You're not a heavy, especially if you're talking adults, like you, you really have, you have no mean, you can't enforce any consequences on anybody. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the best you can hope to do is encourage them to do something on their own because you cannot force them to do it. And so your, um, a lot of times when we say hold them accountable, we mean like be a, a jack wagon. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. oh, hey, uh, did you? You were supposed to read your Bible five times this week. Did you do it? No, I made four. Well, you're failing. How do you feel about your failures? Right? Like, like it's just like, and there's it's much different than going. Did you know you're failing? It's much. There's there's a difference between helping someone, finding ways to encourage them, give them uh, reminders, suggestions. Hey, checking in. How's your Bible reading going? Is much different than are you screwing it up like you were last time? When are you are when are you going to get tired of feeling so disappointed in yourself and so and get it better? You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, even in Christian circles, our accountability looks like like we're working on God's behalf as His like side men with yeah. the bats yeah. and the clubs. And like I, I just it it works every once in a while in moments for certain people, but it is not sustainable. What people need sustainably is encouragement. They need to know that when even when they sucked at something, that like you're not going anywhere. And that you believe that they can that they can accomplish the thing that they want, not the thing that you want on their behalf. Yeah. And so I, I, I would be just uh, – it's not implicit on how you frame the question, but a lot of time where things go awry on accountability is you turn is like their, their fealty stops being to Jesus and it starts being to this conversation with you. 
And that's the thing you want to stay out of because you're not going to be with him all the time. And frankly, your two things that need to point to King Jesus need to stay pointing at King Jesus. Yeah, accountability is permission based anyway, right? Like they have to ask for it. Right. Like we there are levels of accountability that don't include you like, you know, verbally berating people and like bringing the consequences, you know, like some people are just like I need you to check up on me every once in a while, right? Like and so but accountability is is, is permission based. Uh like to Ben's point though, like it has a lot to do with the motivation of the person that you're talking about, right? Like if they want to change and they're asking for your help, you have an invitation to speak into their life, and that's fine. Um, if their behavior is causing uh, hurt or pain or something that you can't you can't sustain, right? Like that you can't hold over. Like everybody gets to screw up, and and you know everybody gets to have in and outs. But like if it's if the weight of their choices is is affecting you in a way that you cannot sustain it. Um, then, like, you're not judging anymore. You're just letting natural consequences play out, right? And so that's not judgment either. Like, the Bible's pretty clear. It's like, judge not lest you be judged. Like, God gets to call the balls and strikes here, right? But he's laid out a framework for freedom. And so by encouraging them, all you're doing is pointing them to freedom. You're saying, look, this is where the freedom is. I hear what you're saying, but that still chains, right? Like, you're just, you're encouraging towards freedom. And accountability is the same way, Right. Like accountability can work that way too. It's like, hey man, um, I'm worried that I'm gonna I'm gonna walk by the chains and see them differently today than or see them differently in a couple of days than I'm seeing it right now. Will you remind me what freedom looks like in a couple of days? Just send me a text or something, you know. And so, like accountability can first of all, accountability is asked for, and so that's permission based. And as far as judging goes, we don't got any uh, authority to be judging other people, but you do have. The, the mind that God gave you to be able to allow consequences to bear themselves out. And so if that means that, like, you have to change the way you interact with them or you have to, like, let their consequences land on them because of a choice that they've made, right, that's not necessarily punitive or judgy. That's just what it is, you know? And I think that's that's the distinction, right? Like, even, even um, don't judge lest you be judged. Like, I mean, the Bible's very clear. You're calling people to discernment. So like you are, it's you are making judgment calls, but like what it's calling, what it's trying to keep you from doing is like you were supposed to look at people with hope. The problem with judging the way the the way that that, that was trying to get at was, um, you've placed someone in a bucket as if they cannot like that is them and they cannot right. move from it. It was a lack. It was is failing to look at people with hope. Yeah. Because Jesus doesn't fail to look at people with hope. Yeah. And it's like bad. that was the thing that humans can't handle very well. You can you're supposed to have discernment and you're supposed to look at people with with a level of hope and opportunity. And it is not your gig to go, dude's lost, lost forever. Love Ben. Yeah. That's yeah. the foul. And like as much as you think that you can probably handle that one, you're a phony. You can't do it anyway. And to Dan's point, like your body, your body language will give you away. Or the or the way that you approach the conversation or the way that you duck the conversation. Like all these things are like can be taken in by human senses to know that it's not actually comfortable. Your words are not as convincing as you believe them to be. And so your heart posture has to be different uh, where you're approaching people with hope uh, in a way that says, you know, even if you know things about, like Christianity struggles with this so hard, right? Like you, you, you know people are like choosing to walk in chains and they've made their whole life decision based on chains. And you're like, Ugh. and all you see is the chains. Right. And all God sees is the freedom. That's not fair. That's not completely true. Uh, but, but like God sees the, the situation for what it is. But like all God is offering is the freedom. Like he's, he's not walking around offering condemnation. He's walking around offering freedom. And so like that, if you if our posture is like that, then actually this question is moot. You don't have to worry about either one. All right. Secular says uh, when you judge another person, it implies that you hold yourself above them. By judging someone, you are not necessarily holding that person accountable. Holding someone accountable doesn't necessarily mean you're judging the person, but rather establishing a boundary you feel shouldn't be crossed. I mean, that's a judgment. Uh, but but they're, to your point, Mike, they're agreeing. They're saying, hold me accountable to this thing. Yes. But, but really, again, if you think of it in a healthy way, what really they should be saying or what you should hear there is not make me do this thing. It's like I'm asking for your help for me to remember the motivation I had in this moment yeah. and to remember the reasons of which I'm doing these things, which means those are positive reminders. Hey, man, I was supposed to exercise three times this week. I've only done it once. And someone goes, hey, I'm just reminding you like you wanted this. You felt like it was important for your health. 
Um, and so I just want to remind you, like, that's what you had said to me. And so I'm, I'm reminding you that, that you said that was important to you. Do you want me to go on a run with you today or something? Right. That that's a way you can hold people accountable. But like, what are you going to do if they say, oh, I don't really want to. You're going to run for them. You're going to grab their legs and make them walk like you cannot force it. And so stop acting like uh, often you, that seems silly, right, that you would do with your arms. But how many times you are we trying to do that with our voice? We're using our voice to shove them down the street so they walk a few steps or to eat the different thing or to stop smoking or whatever it is you're trying to stop doing. Uh, and so, like, it, it's, it doesn't seem as bad to use your voice, but, like, I just it's, – um, it's often demotivating, to be honest with you. Like, uh, the accountability that comes with a heavy human hand is just demotivating to people. Like, you want sustainable motivation, and you get it by encouraging them and being um, – and being – that you can't run dry. That like even when they've lost all their motivation, you're there going, no, I think you can do it. Let me run, let me go with you. Let me help you go pick out some groceries. Let me let, let, let's throw the cigarettes away. Do you like, th- do you think that it's unfair? Because like I feel like I've categorized like um, you know heaven and hell this way before. You know where I've said like 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 the Bible uses judgment language, and I will generally break it down to just consequences of choices. Yeah. Right. Like and and so like is that a is that too soft of a rendering, right? Like, is the uh, the Bible is using judgment for a reason, as if it carries, right? Because it does carry a punishment connotation to it. That's a natural consequence. You you chose forever to be absent of God and His attributes, and the description of God's missing attributes are darkness and uh, forever torment yeah. and absence of His hope. Yeah, and so that's a natural consequence to saying. That God can go pound. Not a cheapening of the way that Bible the, the Bible talks. No, about. again, like I think sometimes uh, the people look for that because they want to use it as the threat, as if that's the motivator. And be honest with you, like sometimes a stark reality really shakes a man up. Like uh, I've been in some situations where, like, I was probably encouraging some guy for nine or ten months in something, and like finally, I just I I, I collected evidence of the impact of how he was behaving. And I sent it to him where every other time I talked to him over the last nine months was like, dude, it's just a blip in the road, man. Your forever can change this morning. I, I, I know like God's working on this in you. I need you to let him. Uh, and like it just ups up hills and valleys, hills and valleys. And then and there's one thing where I thought, you know, he needs to see this. He needs to see the impact of what this is doing. And so I showed it to him. And then, I, frankly, things have been I wasn't my miracle or anything, but like to see it come back from somebody else and go, oh. Oh, right. That's that's I, I was he wasn't seeing it in that light. And then things helped change for him a little bit. And so like uh, the realities of an eternal separation from God, this isn't you better follow Jesus or this is what you're going to get. The thing is, is that like what you're doing, this is the end. This is what you're building. Are you sure this is what you want to build? Yeah. Because, uh, again, like people, Jesus is not going to force you to spend forever with him. No one wants to spend forever in heaven with a guy who don't want to be there. And so, but do, do you realize that you think that there's a third, fourth, fifth, fiftieth way of which you get to be without God as an attributes and have it not be terrible? And that's where you're mistaken. And, like, that's just a fact. That's a communication issue. But I'm not going to go, dude, you better follow Jesus, otherwise you're going to end up in the fiery depths of hell. Because, like, I, I'm, I'm calling them, a, like, a way from from evil as opposed to to glory and like Jesus is offering the glory he needs to know Jesus he like again same same premise actually you don't want to be in heaven forever with a guy who goes look I don't even know if I want to be here I just know that I didn't want to go to Jersey I didn't want to be there and so that's why I'm here just tell me where the salad bar is hmm. like what's not a forever that anybody wants hey I haven't asked the pastor is there a salad bar in heaven yes okay yes that's a slant that's a guarantee. It's next no to the hoo hot. <laughs> the the <laughs> prime rib has the same caloric intake as a salad because the Lord loves you. I don't know if this is just telling of me being a little fat Christian kid sometime ago, uh-huh. but I had a legitimate thought in my mind for years that there was going to be a McDonald's buffet in heaven. Could like you? that was a real yeah. part of my childish theology. That was like I'm super excited to meet my family members by the the Fanta fountain. That's at the all-you-can-eat McDonald's buffet. A lot of people because are there because Jesus of McDonald's. Loves me. They might as well. That's, that's you know. right. I just like I had completely figured it out. I was like, Jesus loves me, and he knows I love Mickey D's. Yeah. Why would he not give me my own personal McDonald's buffet? Meet my family at the Fanta Fondue. Exactly. Forever, forever with Jesus. Like he's gonna, he's gonna love me. I'm gonna open those gates, and he'd be like, Big Mac, buddy. <laughs> and then there's no calories in heaven. 
Okay, sorry about that. You've been listening to Live from the Path. Thanks for hanging out with us so far. Uh, I guess for the whole evening, we're 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 cutting a trail here. Um, make sure again, go hook up with uh, Jeff Arendale's socials. See him at the show, and if you do see him, uh, say, uh, "Hey, man, I heard about you on Live from the Path." It just, we get a little a little rip out there that people say, "Hey, going on Live from the Path brings in the people." Yeah, and so just go ahead and say that. Also, if you go to the McDonald's or the Texas Roadhouse. You should go, hey, I heard about this. They were talking about it from the path. <laughs> that's fine, too. Because if we could get some free rolls or something, that seems good. Actually, mm-hmm. just about anywhere that's not nefarious, you should say that. Yeah. I heard I if you go on a cruise. Yeah. We talked about cruises. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> Carnival right. Cruise Line. I heard about you guys on this show called Live from the Path. Yeah. Yeah, you should do that. Just go ahead and name drop it. We talk about all kinds of things. I'm sure we talked about it. Some, all every gas station. We've, sure, we've, we've hashtagged like Taylor Swift. We took a uh, part of that like Eagles thing that happened that one time. Yeah. by putting the eagle head yeah. or the puppet on the microphone. Right. We ride waves here. Yeah, that's what we do. We're in on it. So anyway, do that. Also, let us know what what you think of the show. You rate the show on your favorite podcast app. Share it if you want to. Go ahead and take the old link on the uh, podcast application you got and share. And just post it on Facebook and say, I listen to these fellas every once in a while. Don't judge me. That's fine. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Put that on out there. In the mean, we're going to put a show together here pretty soon uh, next week, week after. I'm not sure. But in the meantime, be faithful in the means. God will handle the ends. You've been listening to Live from the Path. Hey, this isn't the standard tune. What is this? No one else can hear this, right? This is just me. It feels like Travesty. something weird's happened in my mind. Take it in, Booba. Sounds like a Creed song. It no longer sounds I like regret a this. Song. I'm mesmerized by it. I really am. It's like a tractor beam. What is this? Pillow. It's by the same guy who sings their, their normal tune. <laughs> oh, it just switched. This sounds like menacing video game music from 1982. Or like you're about to get, be attacked by a string of killer Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> this is very clockwork orange. Oh. You'll pay. Something like that. That's the thing. Move <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> what is this, a jazz odyssey and now a fever dream? I would apologize for wasting your time, but you're still listening. I, this is a person. You've chosen this. It's like the end of Deadpool 3 like or Deadpool 2. It's, it's, it's over. You got to go. Okay, we got to. You gotta. I thought something crazy was gonna happen. Just then. <laughs> it's oh, the anticipation is killing me. <laughs> oh, hey, okay, hey, hey. Now we sound right. Hey, there it is. Okay then. The okay. Folk base is kicked in. Now we can leave. You're welcome. You've been listening to live from the path. Dig that funky action, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah. That really turned around. Yeah.